Hi there folks, welcome back to the IBM Andy Fisher channel. I hope you're doing really well. Please don't forget if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, you need to do that right now. That way you'll be kept in touch with all the news and reviews, all the fishing and all the other stuff that goes on in this little corner of the internet. If you're currently subscribed to the channel, thank you very much for joining us again. Really appreciate you being here. Now, big review this one, really, really important one. This is a product that came out last year to a whole heap of fanfare and quite a lot of controversy as well. I think I'm right in saying at the moment, and it was the case when it first came out as well, that this is the world's most expensive mass production single-handed fly rod. If it's not now, then it certainly was right up there at the point where it came out. This is not a cheap piece of kit. So the big question from this review is going to be, can the Sage R8 Core that I've been using for the past eight months or so stand up to its mighty price tag? Now, as I say, I've been using this for quite a long time now. In truth, this review should have come out quite a long time ago. Uh, I lost a load of footage of the rod fish releases and stuff like that that would have just filled the review out and made it look a little bit more pretty. As it is, I really want to get this review out before the start of the trout season. Now, I can tell it's nearly the start of the trout season here in the UK because it is currently right outside my window snowing. <laughs> We've got about an inch and a half of snow on the ground. That's a sure sign that the trout season is nearly upon us. But coming back to this thing, so this is the Sage R8 Core 9 foot 4 weight. For me, the 9 foot 4 weight is sort of the classic all-round UK river trout rod. We don't really have the necessity for the really fast action 9 foot 5 weights that are no more popular in the States. A 9 foot 4 weight in the UK for me is, if you're going to buy one rod for your medium to larger size rivers, the 9 foot 4 weight is probably the way to go. Personally, I prefer the 10 foot 4 weight, but it's not everyone's cup of tea. So the 9 footer, I just felt this was the most applicable one for most UK river styles. So the plan here is I'm going to go through what the rod's got first, how it's built, what we've actually got in the package, and then afterwards I'm going to talk about whether or not it can justify that price tag and what I actually thought of the R8 Core 9 foot 4 weight. So first things first, as ever with Sage, they are so good at this stuff. They are so good at this stuff. Even the rod tube, just holding the rod tube, which is, I assume, aluminium, incredibly high quality. You could throw this in, a, in your luggage hole in a plane, something like that. You know it's going to be safe. Beautiful Sage logo in laser etching at the top of the cap. Everything is just premium, premium, premium. Sage are really good at this. I've used quite a lot of Sage rods in the past and they are just one of the absolute best at making sure you know you've got a premium product. Even down to this. Now this is, <laughs> talk about over designing. This is so cool. So this isn't a rod bag that you have to knot together. It's just on a drawstring. It's really, really simple. So at the end of the day, when you finish fishing, rather than having to knot it up, you just pull your drawstring in and your rod bag's sealed. I just think that's genius. I don't know why that's never been thought of before. It's totally unnecessary, but again, you just know you've got a premium product when you're looking at stuff like that. Even the quality of the material on the rod bag, it's exactly what you'd expect from a premium Sage. It just feels right, it feels good. I'm gonna pop all four sections out of this four piece rod. Let's put that rod bag down there for the moment. And what we've got here, is the rod. Now we're going to start down at the butt section first because there's a lot to talk about down there. We'll work our way up. Let's have a look at this R8 core. So single up locking reel seat. Really, really fancy this. I must admit, I personally had a preference for the old uh, Struble reel seat that Sage had always used, the kind of silvery one. Really, really nice. Uh, they've changed that with this Ranger Rods to something that's a little bit more space age. It's a little bit more futuristic looking. Uh, it's got the engraving on the reel seat so you know which rod you've got if you've got them in a boat or something like that and you just want to grab one off, you keep them set up. The wood spacer here is what Sage describes as a Zeracote, a sustainably sourced Zeracote reel spacer. I'm not entirely sure what Zeracote is. I don't know if that's a type of wood that I've not heard of. I've got no idea. Some of these manufacturers like to get a bit exotic with this stuff. It looks nice. <laughs> it's, they haven't overthought that bit too much. The rest of it's really funky, but actually the wood inserts just feels good quality. It feels like it's going to last. Coming up to the little full wells handle, quite unusual this one. Sage do this on quite a lot of their nine footers with the full wells and I actually quite like it. I find it suits the way I grip a rod a little bit better than perhaps a half wells does these days. As ever with Sage, we've talked about this before with a couple of other premium manufacturers, the quality of the cork is just ridiculous. Don't get me wrong, this is a little bit dirty at the moment because I've used it quite a lot, but it is just flawless cork, absolutely perfect, as you'd expect for a rod at this price point. 
But if you're the kind of person for whom that matters, you are going to appreciate the quality of the cork on here because it is absolutely grade A. Basically no filler, nothing's come out, nothing missing, everything's perfect. It's been, been turned absolutely to the millimetre perfectly. Moving up a little bit, we've got a keeper ring. I cannot believe how many premium rods these days don't have a keeper ring there. I just don't understand it. If you're a premium rod manufacturer and you're making a new fly rod, put a bloody keeper ring on it for goodness sake. Up from here, we've got all the branding, Sage R8 Core, Revolution 8 technology. I must admit, I don't entirely know what Revolution 8 technology means. They talk on their video spiel about it being a technology that no one else in the States has got. They don't actually tell you what it is. They talk about the fibers being stiffer and lighter. Whatever it is, they've put it in this rod. One thing you'll notice here straight away is the incredible quality on the whippings here. Now, again, this is something, it will not affect how this is going to fish at all. But these graded whippings on here are absolutely beautiful, complete work of art. These are the little touches that separate out a premium rod from the rest of the rods on the market. And I must admit, I'm really into it. Flip it over there, you see it's made in the USA and it's got the individual code number there. So if you have any warranty issues or anything like that, they know exactly which rod you've got and when it was made. I really like that again with Sage. They're really careful with stuff like this. They describe the blank colour as being silver pine. It is quite an unusual colour, actually. It's, it's, it's just a little bit more blingy than a straightforward grey. It's really pretty. It's not overly shiny, but I do really like that colour. It's just pretty. Again, in terms of functionality, it makes absolutely no difference, but it does look really, really nice and goes really nicely with those graded slate, slate grade trims. Big fan of that. We'll put the butt section down and we'll come up to the next one. One thing that's worth talking about there is actually you don't get any line alignment dots or anything like that. Sage trusts you to be able to put a rod together properly, which I don't think is unfair. The likelihood is if you're buying this rod for the amount of money it costs, you probably know how to put it together. So I don't mind that too much. Coming up to the next section, again, we've got this beautiful graded tippings on the whippings there down on the female end of the joint. And we've got a Fuji ceramic stripper guide, really good quality stuff, as you'd expect from Sage. They're not using cheap fixtures and fittings as a proper Fuji guide. And those things last forever. Coming up, we've got chromed snakes right the way through the rest of the rod and what appear to be almost transparent whippings. I'm not sure if these are transparent or if they're just about the same color as the rod blank, but you can barely see them on there. Really, really nice, classy, minimalist finish again. Graded whippings on the female section, chrome snakes right the way through to the tip ring. As you would expect from a rod of this price, you cannot fault the build quality on this thing at all. Sage throw everything at these rods. The guys who make these rods are brilliant at it. And once again, they have absolutely smashed it out of the park. In terms of the rest of the specs on the rod, so Sage say that this rod weighs two and 11 sixteenths of an ounce. I've got absolutely no idea. I think the Americans are the only people who use imperial measurements these days. I've got no idea how much that is, but I will find out and I will put it on the screen somewhere around here what that is in grams because it'll make more sense. Now Sage described the R8 core as a fast action multi-application rod range and I sort of understand where they're coming with that but actually it's quite nice on the Sage website they go into specific detail with each rod as to what they feel like the specific application of that rod would be. They described the nine foot four weight as being best for dry fly and smaller nymphs, accuracy, stuff like that, line control. And that sort of makes sense. For, for the people who are buying a nine foot four weight, that's pretty much what you're going to buy it for, regardless of where you are in the world. So that is the entire package. That is your Sage R8 core nine foot four weight in terms of what you get when you take it out of that beautiful white tube. Obviously, it's quite easy for me to just list off the stuff that's written on the Sage website. What we're actually looking for is kind of my experiences of using the rod, how I've got on with it and what I thought of it. So we're going to go into that bit of the review now. Now, I'm not going to lie. The first time I put this rod together, I gave it a wiggle without a reel on it, without a line in it, in the living room. And straight away I went, oh, it's fast. It's stiffer. It's stiffer than I expected it to be. And I think that's probably how most people feel the first time they put this rod together, because I'll be honest with you, it does feel a little bit stiff. A pers my personal preference is for slightly more mellow rod actions. And my first instinct on this was, oh, it's a little bit faster. It's faster than I thought it was going to be. I will say, having used it now for a lot of different things in a lot of different ways over the last eight months, I've sort of changed my mind on that a little bit. And I'm going to go into that in more detail. Now when Sage sent this over to review, they sent it over with one of the Rio lines, Sage and Rio, the same company. So they sent over the, the four-weight Rio Creek. Now the guys who, are, who have sent the rod over sort of know the kind of fishing I do. Small to medium-sized rivers, short to medium-length casting, lots of mending, lots of roll casting, stuff like that. It's a fairly chunky fly line, the creek, and actually it fits this rod perfectly. And in terms of the fishing I do, it was capable of really bringing the best out of the rod. Abby and I do a lot of dry fly fishing, and that's mostly what we've used this rod for. But we do it on small to medium sized rivers, often with quite light tippets. It's very rare we fish higher than 5x, four and a half, five pound 
quite often will fish 6x or 7x tippets and my big worry when I first wiggled this rod was oh 7x not quite so sure about that that feels a little bit stiff and I like for 7x but it didn't matter at that point because we got the rod just as we were coming into the mayfly season and we could do a load of mayfly fishing on it with 5 and 6x absolutely no problem at all the rod was mellow enough that 5 and 6x we never had a single crack off on the strike didn't have to be particularly careful with it there was a little bit more subtleness in that tip than what I first gave it for when I gave it that wiggle in the living room I got that slightly wrong it's a little bit more gentle than that as we went through the summer and you remember last year was a very hot very dry summer we had very low water levels and things got really technical and we were having to use 6x 7x all of a sudden and that's where I started to wonder you know has this thing got the delicacy in the tip section to be able to deal with that the answer is yes yeah yeah it really did uh, I don't think it's what it's designed for I don't think it'd be the rod that I'd want to fish with 7x with permanently but yeah, it did. It absolutely did. And the best example of that actually was, was not a grayling, but actually a big stocky rainbow trout that hooked on 7x tippet recently. And it absolutely tore me around all over the place. But by being careful with how I played it, by having the reel set up properly, and by letting the rod and the tip section particularly cushion those lunges and the jumps when it went, I was able to get that fish in the net. And I was really surprised at that because I thought I was going to be in trouble. In terms of casting the R8 core, yeah, I mean, as I say, it is, it is a stiffer rod than perhaps I usually go for, certainly. What that has meant is that the times when I've needed to punch a wind or if I've needed to get a little bit further, perhaps for fishing the lower dove or the Derwent, it has done that absolutely fantastically. I've covered quite a lot of range with this rod, quite a lot of different types of fly, quite a lot of different lengths of leader. Always felt like it was going roughly where I wanted it to. I don't really like the idea of fly rods being accurate, particularly I think there's a lot more to it than just that, but at no point did this feel inaccurate, put it that way. I always felt like wherever I was putting the rod tip, the fly line was following it and that's as much as you can ask for. Very little counter flex. Obviously that helps with the accuracy kind of thing. There's, there's no great wobble. There's nothing vibrating down the fly line affecting the way the fly line flies. Your loop formations are always good. And I genuinely think that if you're going to try and get the most out of the R8 core, nine foot four weight, you're probably going to be fishing ranges of between 30 and 60 feet. That's kind of the top end range of where I do most of my fishing. I'm generally a little bit shorter than that. So it was really interesting to test a rod that I thought was going to be a little bit too stiff and find that actually with very minor adjustments to my own casting stroke, it really wasn't. In fact, I've done some really short range fishing with this thing as well, like a couple of rod lengths stalking fish in the edges when the fishing got difficult in the summer. And it's coped with that absolutely perfectly and was really, really fun. It's not just overhead casting either, did lots of roll casts with the rod. I must admit for me, a roll cast comes down to the line as much as the rod and that creek line actually belted out a really nice roll cast. Did lots of roll casting with it. Again, there's no great counter flex. There's no massive vibration or anything like that. It goes where you point it, it does what you ask it to and nothing more and that is exactly what you're looking for. One of the things I think Sage have always been excellent at is running similarly priced ranges of rods, particularly at the premium end, that are different enough in the actions and in the applications that they can justify them both being there. And currently Sage in the 9 foot 4 weight, they've got about half a dozen options but there are two really that I think sit next to each other quite comfortably. And that would be the R8 core in the 9 foot 4 weight and then their light line in the 9 foot 4 weight. Now the light line is exactly how it sounds. It's a slightly more moderate action. I must admit for the fishing that I do the most, it's probably the more applicable rod. But I will say with a light line, once you start creeping over 40, 50 feet with those casts, particularly with a heavier line like the Creek, which I did use, have use with the light line, that can start to feel a little bit overloaded. So if you're looking at buying a premium rod and you're caught between those two options, if you do shorter range fishing like I generally do, then have a look at the light line as well. Try and get out and cast them both to see if there's one that suits your casting style better. If you're fishing slightly longer, so I'm thinking in the UK specifically, I'm thinking the guys who are fishing like the middle and lower Usk or somewhere like the lower beats of the Test or some of the bigger Scottish rivers where you've got to cover a little bit more water to get to those fish. I think the nine foot four weight R8 core is going to be the one for you instead of the light line. If you're fishing the upper reaches of the test or the middle and upper dove or the middle and upper derwent like we do or ooh, where else could it go? The up, upper reaches of the usk or the Y. Yeah, they've got the light line there as well in the nine foot four weight, which you'd also want to look at. But I can tell you from having fished them both quite a lot last year, they are both fantastic fly rods. I guess the big question here, the question that sort of gonna, is going to define this review is for all the fancy bags and the fancy tubes and the fancy corks and all that stuff, who needs to go out and spend £1,050 on a trout fly rod? And the answer to that question truthfully is no one.
No one needs to go out and spend £1,050 on a trout fly rod. There is absolutely no necessity that anybody would ever go and spend that money. And if somebody in your local fly shop has told you that you need to go and buy one of these, my advice to you would be go and find another fly shop because there is no necessity. It's a funny thing this, I was thinking about this the other day. Um, when we talk about a dry fly rod through the whole course of the summer, I probably spend more time casting and fishing and looking at this rod than I will do watching my TV or I will do sitting on my sofa or I will do sat behind the wheel of my car. I spend a huge amount of time with a fishing rod and that's why, for me personally, the little touches like the whippings, like the quality core, like a fantastic reel seat, that's why for me personally they really matter and they do make a difference. I know that's not the same for everyone out there and as I've just said, do not feel like you have to go and spend a thousand pounds on a fly rod to be a better angler because it is not true. But there are a lot of people out there like me who spend a lot of time fishing these rods who just appreciate these little things, these little bits and pieces that over the course of the amount of, the amount of time you spend fishing these things really adds up, really makes a difference and really makes you feel like you're fishing something special. And if that's something that matters to you like it matters to me, then I would absolutely have no qualms in suggesting going out and buying one of these because it is an absolute work of art. It's a beautiful fishing rod, beautifully made by people who really care about the quality of the output that comes out of their factory. You can tell the guys at Sage love making these things. It shines through in the rod. As ever, my advice is always, when you're buying a premium piece of kit, go to a good shop that's got a few different options, cast a few different ones, cast a few different lines on a few different rods. These are really, really personal pieces of kit. And it may well be that what suits me might not suit you, what suits my fishing might not suit your fishing. So absolutely, if you've got the opportunity to go to one of the big retailers, get out on a casting pool, try a few of these out, because there's gonna be one of these rods that you absolutely fall in love with. The R8 core may well just be the one. In terms of warranty on the Sage R8 core, I'm gonna deal specifically with the UK here because this sort of varies in different parts of the world. The distributor guide fly fishing offer the original purchase a lifetime warranty. And it looks like the cost of getting new sections is somewhere around about 45 pounds. I think the website says it starts from 45 pounds, but there is still that lifetime original user warranty there. So if that's something that you guys are concerned about when you're buying a rod at this price point, it does appear from the distributor in the UK, but guide fly fishing that you're gonna get that after sales support. So that is a big tick again there for Sage. They've always been pretty good at warranty stuff and I can't see any reason why that wouldn't continue. Folks, I'm gonna wrap it up there. As you can tell, I've really enjoyed fishing the rod. I really appreciate the versatility. I really, really like fishing this thing when there's a little bit more distance between me and the target fish. So if you're fishing those bigger rivers, if you need to put a little bit more distance between you and your target fish, you need to check out the R8 core. It's got to be on the list. I'm gonna wrap up now. Thank you very much for watching this review. Please don't forget to drop us a comment in the comment section. Let us know what you think, particularly those of you who have fished the nine foot four weight R8 core. In fact, any of the other rods in the range, do let us know if you've fished any of them. Let us know your personal opinions and let us know if you've got a premium rod purchase coming up this spring. Has this affected your opinion at all? Are you gonna go out and try one of these? If not, you really should do. Thank you very much for watching this review, folks. We really appreciate it. Ivy and I are going to be back soon with some more reviews, some more fishing and some other stuff. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Take care, folks. Bye bye.